you, you've done so many things, and many of them are known, but a lot of them aren't known, Ted. Um, and one of the things Thankfully. That, <laughs> well, I'm not going to argue with that, that's for I just, sure. <laughs> you've got to inject a little humor into it because uh, it's true. we're never going to get anywhere with too long of faces. Yeah, that is so true. You know, one of the questions that I'm asked a lot about you is why you own so much land. Uh, you are the largest private landowner in America. You own some two dozen branches, and I can testify to how absolutely beautiful most of them are. Um, so what's that about? Talk, talk about well, it's that. about raising bison, primarily. The, the large acreage was, I, when I was a little boy, uh, I was always fascinated with nature. And I read the stories of how the bison were brought to the brink of extinction, uh, oddly enough, before they were even studied scientifically. And, uh, and I wanted to, if I grew up and got wealthy enough, I wanted to help bring them back. But not just them, because if you have a, a, a ranch that's being managed environmentally for bison, it's also good for elk and antelope and deer and prairie dogs and so forth. I'm bringing back the prairie dogs, too. We've got 250,000 of them on our <laughs> property, and yeah. I'm shooting for, shooting for 700,000. That's my goal. But we have to... We, put in, we have to keep them within a mile of the fences. Uh, that's why we need big ranches, because our neighbors don't want the prairie dog. Yeah, I know. And uh, they really should be on the endangered species list. In fact, uh, we've been transporting uh, the, the prairie dogs that are displaced uh, around Den the Denver area by uh, real estate development. We've transferred a number of them down to the open spaces in New Mexico and uh, put them on a ranch down there and gave them a new home to, uh, to live in. We, we have a, a, a prairie dog state down there. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, Ted, that's one of the things yeah. that isn't talked about a lot is that on every one of your ranches, We don't really even kill everyone, rattlesnakes. I know, you, but you've also brought back, on every ranch, you have brought back endangered species. Well, we, well, we've tried to. In the to, water, uh, in the land, yeah, yeah, in yeah. the air. Yeah, we, 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 we have the only uh, private endangered species fund, I think, in the world. Yeah, and it's been highly effective. And it's been successful. So, we work very closely with the state and federal agencies uh, that, are, that have that responsibility, and we, we raise black-footed ferrets and... Uh, and we raise uh, Mexican wolves, and we don't let them go. And you know the the, uh, the government does that, but we but we help out. So the ranchers are very much about preservation and conservation, and you put them into conservation trusts so it's protected land. But there are people, you know, they look at all these millions of acres, and that's only two million. Oh, two million. <laughs> I wish it was millions of acres. <laughs> well, two million is more than one. But it was, so here's all this land, and, and knowing how committed you are to the environment, um, if it were going to solve the problem, you could put photovoltaics, solar, wind, and I'm all going to. this property. But there are barriers, right? Can we talk about why you haven't done that already? Well, I've, I've done some, and I, I'll do more when, uh, when it makes. Uh, but when I can afford to do it because it makes some economic sense. What we have to do if we're going to uh, reduce our carbon footprint is we've got to have financial incentives for uh, clean, renewable, locally produced energy instead of fossil energy that's, uh, that's really old paradigm. You know, it's been, been with us for a couple hundred years and it, it works great, but it's strictly a transition we can't afford to because of the environmental impacts. Uh, we, we can't afford to keep uh, burning it because we're going to turn the world into a hothouse. We are turning it now. I, I flew into uh, and flew over from Denver today, and if you look out the window of your airplane, uh, all you see is dead, dead forest. And that's what's happening up in Montana and down in Georgia all over, because I'm, I'm in a lot of, different, uh, lot of different ecosystems. And the trees are dying because of pine beetles, caused by the, the, the warming. Just a little bit of warming throws things, some things out of kilter. And a lot of the planet is being, being thrown out of uh, kilter. Then there are the other problems, like the overfishing of the oceans. The ocean fisheries are, are collapsing right now all around us. And uh, uh, we've got to uh, 
regulate the amount of fish that we take from the sea and, and create more, uh, more preserves uh, where people can't fish at all, so the fish have a chance to reproduce and uh, grow to maturity. We're, we're, uh, we're completely exterminating the, uh, the fish from the ocean, which is a big thing about what we eat. And every year we add 80 million people to the world's population, more people, and a, and a shrinking environment. It's, it's not sustainable.